the new surrounding. Mm -hmm. You guys can give him lots of love and attention, and he'll be a happy boy. Okay. Because of the bond Carla and Renata have developed with Keiko, it was crucial for them to accompany him to Oregon. Well, we, we are planning to go with Keiko and then to stay with him for a while, maybe four to six months, until we train a new trainer to train Keiko. <laughs> when he goes to Oregon, the trip is going to be very long and very stressing because he's going to be in a new place with a different temperature, with different people, different language. Everything's going to be different. So I think it's very, very important that we are with him all the time. I mean, we are going to be his main support. After weeks of regular medical examinations, Dr. Cornell reports back from Mexico that Keiko's health appears to be at even greater risk than had been initially thought. We're two weeks away from when we're supposed to be moving Keiko, and the veterinarians are extremely concerned with the blood work coming in. Uh, we think we have to get Keiko out of there for his health, and that uh, if the blood work comes up any worse than it is now, it could mean that Keiko's life is in danger. Phillips and Cornell realized that Keiko's deteriorating health had reached a critical state. A delay could mean that he would not survive the move. Ten months later, and Keiko's new home rapidly nears completion. A lot of worry, a lot of headaches, and a lot of sleepless nights uh, since February. Um, there's, just a, there's just a lot of stress. All the life support systems running, we'll be working on that for the next several weeks. Right now, we're just flowing on adrenaline. This is the ozone tower. Um, that ozone will be used to treat the water. Inside is the machine that runs it. This is the freezer behind me. It's designed to store 120,000 pounds of frozen fish. The pool is done. Everything's ready to go. It's been operational um, all this week, but there's a lot of cosmetic things we'll still be cleaning up for the rest of this month. Uh, but we're ready for Keiko. His home is ready. In Mexico City, a C-130 cargo plane arrives, donated by United Parcel Service for the move. A massive construction crane is positioned it will lift the huge container in which Keiko will be conveyed. So he's going to go backwards. He's, he's going to go backwards to the airport, and okay. uh, which is fine. That's not a, that not a problem. Spin it there. And then we don't even have to spin it around because it's going to go into the into the airplane right. nose first, so it'll come right off the back of the truck. Okay. For Dave Phillips and Lanny Cornell, the logistics of transporting a three-ton orca seem to get no less complex, despite months of detailed planning. More than 20,000 people a day pour through the gates of Reno Aventura to bid farewell to Keiko. Dave Phillips and one of the park vets suddenly become aware of a potential problem. Lanny, this is Dave. I'm down here at Poolside, and we have a problem of what I would say is major proportions. I'm here with Dr. Solarzano. We found out all of about three hours ago that UPS is demanding that if unless we get Keiko to the airport 415, they pull the plug and we have no relocation. And Reno has got everything planned down here for 7 a.m. departure. We've got police escorts. We've got every single government official prepared to have this whale out of here. And it sounds like only three hours difference, but I can tell you we are in serious risk of not getting Keiko out of here. A last-minute delay in the departure time has threatened to jeopardize the entire move. Keiko's final performance is sold out. Keiko rises to the occasion with an unforgettable finale. This is the last time Keiko will perform in Mexico. Behind the scenes, the tone is far less buoyant. So what are we going to do? Dr. Cornell's coming in in three hours. The effect of this change greatly alters the plans that have been in place for many months. Are we going to pull the plug and start again? 
yeah. we have already said, as you notice, know, okay. It's like changing the time. The logistics of Keiko's move must be finalized. One more time from you, if I could, in order of importance, why it is that we cannot leave at seven, why we have to be wheels up at four. Uh, is that question not to me? That question is to you. Yeah, hold a sec. We need more volume on you, too. Situation as I've been uh, uh, counseled with it is it, this all has to do with the requirements of lifting uh, the whale and the weight at a certain time based on the climatic conditions of Mexico. Yeah. And there's, and there's going to be that much difference between four o'clock and seven o'clock in terms of air temperature in Mexico City. The, my understanding is that if it reaches 50 or 55 degrees uh, somewhere around that neighborhood, and I can get the technical support for that but that it, we will not be able to lift that aircraft. UPS will do anything it has to do to safely transport that whale. After hours of negotiations, a compromise is reached. The plane must take off by 5 a.m., or not at all. By midnight on moving day, everything is ready to go. The first task is to coax Keiko into a holding tank. Despite months of rehearsals, he seems to sense that something is different and refuses to enter. He manages to avoid the net twice. But the third attempt is successful. US and Mexican trainers are also in the water to reassure Keiko in preparation for the big move. He must be fitted into a special canvas sling. For months, this has been a routine part of Keiko's daily training. But Dr. Cornell is concerned that the roar of the crane, bright lights, and the hundreds of spectators may cause Keiko to panic. With the sling finally in place, Keiko's handlers dry him before covering his back with a moisturizing cream to keep his skin from drying out during the long trip. They give Keiko final reassurance before he is lifted from the water. water is a whale about to die. Is it possible that he might remember that traumatic night nearly two decades ago when he was captured? As Keiko hangs in the night sky, his fate lies once again in human hands. He would not survive a fall from this height. He must remain calm. sling for the 14-hour ordeal that lies ahead. 1,360 kilograms of ice are added to water that half fills his container. It is essential that Keiko stays cool. 
Warm-blooded orca can overheat and suddenly die during transport. It is now 2 a.m. No one is prepared for the scene that awaits the convoy outside the gates of Reno Aventura. A secret route to the airport has been planned by the Mexican authorities, but Keiko's departure is anything but secret. Now, behind schedule, the crew begins to load the massive live cargo into the plane. Roller bars are positioned on which the 15-ton crate will glide. Suddenly, the crate lurches forward and comes to a grinding halt. A roller is hopelessly jammed. The crew works frantically for hours, and even more time is lost. Could it be that Keiko has come this far only to die, stranded on a runway? Carla and Renata do their best to calm him and monitor his condition. Two very tense hours later at 5 a.m., the jammed roller is freed and Keiko disappears into the depths of the plane. Due to weight limitations, only doctors Cornell and Solizano will accompany Keiko on the long flight. The others will follow in a smaller plane. As they ascend, Keiko edges ever closer to one day regaining his freedom. Er zijn wezens die zich diep in de jungle terug hebben getrokken. Er zijn wezens waar we zo weinig van weten dat hun bestaan ons nog steeds een mysterie is. Een mysterie dat zich vanavond zal manifesteren om 9 uur op Discovery Channel. Oh. Hmm. Every Saturday, cable and wireless phone customers pay no more than 50p for a UK long distance call however long it lasts. To join our phone service, free call 0500 500 500 now. Anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than... Now, what the bath takes away, Johnson's helps to put back with their new baby protective moisturizer. Anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. With no, a special can. blend of natural oils, like those in your skin. Yeah, you Rediscover baby soft skin. <laughs> what are you, Bob? 28. There's a great future for you. No good. We're going to have to tighten our belts. Can you hear me? I've won the contract. Daddy, is this your office? At Scottish Widows, we've made sure that our savings, pensions and investments are flexible enough to deal with whatever life deals you. Scottish Widows. Looking good for your money. I'm a footballer. Not a movie star. I just want to feel good about the way I look. New L'Oreal LV 2-in-1. It contains Ceramide R, which strengthens the hair from within. For stronger, thicker, healthy looking hair. New L'Oreal LV 2-in-1 with Ceramide R. It's L'Oreal and I'm worth it. 
When you take a short break with us, you don't have to eat at any of our famous name restaurants. You don't have to meet Casper. You don't have to be amazed by the jugglers or the masked stage show. You don't even have to visit Noddy in Toyland. Because under our weatherproof pavilion, what you do is up to you. The all-new family entertainment resorts from Butlins. Call free on 0800 222 5. Two hours behind schedule, Keiko's plane must land in Phoenix, Arizona for refueling. His body heat has melted all of the ice. The water in his container has become alarmingly warm. Even though further delay is dangerous, Dr. Cornell orders nearly a ton of ice and a change of water before they can proceed. The flight crew then receives a report that bad weather threatens to close the airport in Newport, Oregon. Rerouting the plane would mean another setback. They have less than two hours to complete the original flight plan. For Keiko, the odds seem to be getting worse. It's now a race against the wind and rain closing in on the Oregon coast. At last, Mother Nature relents. Air traffic control clears the plane for landing. stampede of reporters from around the globe has descended upon this quiet town to cover Keiko's story. Thousands of spectators have been waiting for hours in the rain. We wanted to let you know Keiko's just doing great. Talk to the vet, everything's okay. So we're going to be trying to get him to the aquarium as fast as we can. Keiko has been in the container for more than 16 stressful hours. And yet, miraculously, he has remained calm through it all. All right. Any calm? All right. are focused on this great undertaking. The first leg of Keiko's journey home is almost over. Exhilaration soon gives way to concerned apprehension. As still the last and most dangerous maneuver is yet to be accomplished. Keiko must be lifted once again.
perilously suspended above the cameras. Keiko's patience and trust are put to the test. The noise and bright lights seem to stir him. Or perhaps it's the sight and smell of the salt water. Whatever the reason, it appears that Keiko will wait no longer. The order is given, and with a final roar of the giant crane, Keiko is safely back in his natural element. Suddenly, it appears that he may be caught in the cables. His trainers risk life and limb to make sure that he's clear. And then finally, Keiko swims free into the cold blue water of his new home. of Keiko's arrival, he appears to be enjoying his new home. For the first time in over 15 years, he is able to dive freely in his new pool, which is five times bigger than the one he left behind in Mexico. The state-of-the-art design includes rock formations, natural acoustics, and random currents. One of the most revealing signs of Keiko's improvement surprises many. Keiko has begun to vocalize. Rarely is this heard in captivity. I laid down on the side of the pool and started whistling to him like the uh, trainers in Mexico had to uh, call him. And all of a sudden he broke into this killer well uh, vocalization that went on and on and on. Dr. Cornell hypothesizes that Keiko has recalled this dialect from his youth. To help answer this question, the Free Willy Foundation turned to Dr. Roger Payne, an expert on whale vocalization and acoustic science. Killer whales make sounds which have components and elements in them which occur all over the world in all killer whale groups. But for every family of killer whales, there is a specific few sounds which only that family makes. Dr. Payne enters Keiko's vocalizations into a computer program that converts the sound into an image or spectrograph. Much like a fingerprint, these images identify Keiko's unique language structure and will perhaps provide a clue in finding his pod. They hope to match the sounds of a group of wild orcas still living in Iceland. There are an estimated six orca pods living along Iceland's eastern coast. Of these, five have been recorded. It's become clear that Keiko is communicating in a dialect common to these orca, but to which particular pod? Many hours of research will be needed to make the match. It's an environmental detective story, but one that may someday be solved.
No matter what his remarkable progress, Keiko's eventual release lies in the hands of humans and the politics of government. Iceland, a rugged island nation of a quarter of a million people. It derives more than three quarters of its economy from fishing. But over a 10 year period, nearly 100 orca were also taken from its waters. President of the Icelandic Whale Friends Society, Magnus Skepardsen, recalls the controversy. We managed to get the nation a little more aware of what is, what is behind this. This is, a, this is a, a suffer for these individuals. This is, uh, these are living beings that are aware of that they are taken from their families. I think all animal abuse is bad, especially if you abuse animals that are aware of what's happening. And look on this incident. These were two or three years old uh, babies that were taken here in 1979 when Keiko was caught here and taken in imprisonment. And he hasn't seen his family all his life. Imagine how furious the world would be if a child would have been taken from their family and taken into slavery for, for some exhibitionism in the world. So I'm more glad than any words can express that this uh, free willy work is uh, starting now in reality and I will be very very glad when the Willy will come home and will be released into its natural environment where its family most likely still is. The news of Keiko's plight first reached Iceland in 1994 shortly after Free Willy was released. The small village of Eskifjord was one of the first to volunteer their help. One idea proposes that Keiko could live in the fjord, protected by a sea pen, until his ability to survive in the wild is tested. Keiko's return also has the unexpected support of local fishermen. This will be considered to be a major event here, and I'm absolutely certain that everybody will lend a helping hand in making this possible. It would be fantastic to have Keiko come back to Eskifjörn. I can assure you of that. There could hardly be a better place than Eskifjörd for Keiko's eventual release. Located along the migration route of Iceland's orca, Keiko would be able to hear and to respond to others of his kind. The final word on his return rests with the government in Reykjavik. And as with the negotiations in Mexico, politics will determine the outcome. Keiko continues to make remarkable progress. In the wild, orcas swim 80 to 160 kilometers a day. Here, constant swimming has brought him a newfound strength and energy. For Carla, the water is so cold at 9 degrees Celsius that she now needs a wetsuit. But Keiko thrives. He now eats nearly twice as much from a wider variety of fish. 110 kilograms of herring, salmon, sardines, squid and capelin each day. In six months, he has already gained over 400 kilograms. His flippers have increased 15 centimeters in width, and he's already grown nearly 30 centimeters in length. Keiko seems to enjoy the measurements and joins in by holding the tape measure in his mouth. But most impressive, is that his skin virus has nearly healed. I, I think it's uh, it's probably 80% normal now, as whereas, whereas uh, even a month ago it was only like 50 or 60%. It's really, yeah. well, really it's dramatically improving. It's less than 
the improvement of the lesions from when Keiko first arrived to six months later is astounding. Dr. Cornell believes that the combination of cold natural seawater, better diet, and freedom from the stress of performing have all contributed to his healing. At this rate, Keiko's virus could be gone within the year. No expense has been spared. A television has been installed so that Keiko can watch and listen to Wild Orca. He appears to be attracted to it and seems to enjoy scenes of Orca leaping. Looking much healthier. I mean, the papilloma is looking amazing. It's just definitely much better. He's more active and he's gaining weight. He's acting silly all the time, he's playing, and he's really active. He really he looks healthier and, and happier. Keiko has begun to spy hop spontaneously, an observational technique common to wild orca. After 15 years of being hand-fed, perhaps the most important thing Keiko must learn is to hunt for food. Nolan Harvey supervises training sessions where Keiko learns to recognize and locate hidden objects. Well, one of the first things we've done with Keiko is, is teach him to respond to the shape. This is his shape, this primary shape. The idea is to use his brain to get him to start thinking, maybe start hunting down an object, looking for a specific object, which hopefully will, will give him the idea that he can use his brain to go out and find things. And it is just the basis of, of a starting on, on a hunting type of behavior within this bull. Live fish could introduce parasites, so for now, praise and herring must be his reward. But most revealing of all are the results of the blood tests. Keiko's immune system is far stronger than at any time before, an indication that the plan is coming to fruition. However, his six months of success mark another inevitable milestone. It is now time for Carla and Renata to leave Keiko and to return home. For them, it's a time of celebration and sadness. Uh, when the time comes to say goodbye, I'll definitely say, um, oh God, this is hard. Um, I'll say I love you very much. <sighs> um, I don't know, uh, this is very hard. <laughs> Five long years of care must come to an end. I know I'm living part of my life, the most important part of my life here. So, that's it. as it is to leave, they know that they must. In order for Keiko to gain the independence, he will need to survive in the wild. Keiko's journey home is in part a story of human nature. What began with cruelty and greed has been eclipsed by compassion and the acknowledgement of our responsibility to these wild creatures. Morgen om half acht, een mysterie voor de...